Hello everybody. Um, because several of you asked for it, um, today it's about the no load of the Revolt 160 Pro. Before coming to that, uh, because I just missed it in the review dis disassembly session, some more uh, details on the thermal design of those two bodies. Uh, the rear bearing shield as well as the front bearing shield are designed like a radial fan. But since uh, both produce airflow in a radial direction, uh, there's no real airflow in a certain direction. Honestly, the rear bearing shield has slightly longer blades, so if at all there is a slight tendency for an airflow from left to right in that picture over here. But by far not enough to get rid of the hundreds of watts lost power inside of the machine. Alright, back to no load. So what I simply did was, uh, yeah, no load without the timing belt of course. Um, I measured both motors at typical voltages, uh, 24, 36, 48, 60 and 72 volts, as well as in both directions. Um, so the results, you can see them over here. Um, so, just wrapped up, uh, especially at higher speeds, we've got several hundreds of uh, watts lost, almost a kilowatt, and uh, that's definitely too much. I contacted the manufacturer, he told me that at 48 watts I should expect no load currents of uh, 5 up to 6 amps. I got 8 amps, so sounds as if something is wrong but um, I checked everything several times I also played around with the hall sensors I used the configuration program of the KLS controllers to uh, auto configure the hall timing but everything even though successfully done did not lead to an incre uh, decrease of no load current yeah so somehow uh, the losses appear always, uh, which is on the one hand bad, but on the other hand at high voltages, high speeds, high torques, uh, there are not too many additional losses except some more current losses based on R times I squared in the stator. Um, but for no load uh, we have just phase currents like some amps and with a 12 milliohms phase to phase resistance that does not explain hundreds of watts. Um, what I also did was uh, using a square wave controller and that was a bad idea because the current, the no load current was uh, much, even much bigger than the ones with the sinusoidal controllers and also the operation was very unsmooth, very noisy and you can also feel vibration. So for those machines I can recommend sinusoidal controllers only and that is also verified by that short experiment coming right now if we apply a little bit of throttle over here and we measure the back EMF under no load on the generator you can see that it's more a sine wave than a rectangular all phase voltages induced look almost the same also for both machines um, so yeah just use sinusoidal controllers for those machines what else do we have um, yeah I, I'm still not sure where those hundreds of watts appear um, some of you also already recognized that uh, the rotor heats up and the rotor is just a uh, passive part with the permanent magnets so um, maybe it's time to think about magnetization or eddy current losses uh, but I'm not that far yet okay so far and um, hope you enjoyed it again and I'm waiting for more comments and uh, of course I also got some more ideas what will happen next especially looking over here we will have some massive forced ventilation and then we will try to increase the continuous peak power. Alright, goodbye.